The severe weather threat is increasing across the plains and our massive snowstorm in the Rockies is just getting underway. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Keg is back with you. We're going to break all that down again. The threat is increasing tonight and tomorrow in the plains. For the snow, we're going to break down how much snow can be expected. It is a lot. It's going to be measured in feet from Denver and especially into the higher elevations of the Rockies and then back into parts of Utah as well. Some snow coming into Wyoming. And then, of course, as always, we're going to have the forecast across the country, the United States and Canada over the next 72 hours, the high resolution future radar and the temperatures stick around to the end to have an update on that long range forecast we had from February about the big time cold coming back relative to normal across the eastern two thirds of the country. Before we get into all this, if you want to stay updated on the weather as we wrap up winter, get into the spring severe weather season and eventually hurricane season, you have to hit subscribe. Please do that. If you happen to find value in this content, I would love it if you hit that thumbs up. Also post in the comments where you're tuning in from. Would love to know what the weather is doing where you live. All right, now we'll get into it. There we go. The storm is starting to get started. You see that spiral right there? That's our big area of low pressure developing. The snow is going to pick up in intensity through the rest of Wednesday and then into Thursday. We have some rain in the parts of Nebraska into Kansas. We are really watching this area in here for the potential for some big time severe weather. We highlighted that risk for you yesterday. Storm Prediction Center has increased the risk. We were talking about the chance for some supercell thunderstorms to develop right along the front. Now, a lot of times when you say supercell, that immediately goes to a tornado threat. And there is going to be the chance for a tornado or two in this region. So again, be prepared for that. You see right here in that enhanced area, that's three out of five. So increasing that severe weather risk the main threat in this area and really all the way back into the green here is going to be large hail the highest risk though in that enhanced bubble if you will from about topeka into saint joseph right at north of harrisonville and then to the west of columbia again that's where that main threat is going to be for that severe weather damaging wind potential for tornadoes and especially large hail. I want to play for you now the high resolution future radar. On the left, you're going to see the snow. On the right, you're going to see the severe weather threat unfold for today and tomorrow. I'll show you tomorrow's severe risk that's also increasing coming up in just one second. All right, here's eight o'clock tonight, March 13th. The snow is getting really, really heavy from Denver and Estes Park into Casper, Wyoming. Severe weather threat is starting to materialize, really extending back as far to the east of St. Louis, St. Louis, Chillicothe. I try to combine St. Louis and I'm doing it again. St. Louis and Chillicothe together. Can't say both of those at the same time. And then for us in Topeka, you see those isolated cells. And then like this guy, you see the darker purples. Those are where we could have those bigger hail cores producing golf ball size hail, maybe even bigger size hail uh, later on tonight and then into tomorrow. Look at midnight. We have some heavy rain. We could use the rain in Iowa. We want to avoid the severe weather threat, though, of course. Very heavy rain. Potential for strong thunderstorms continuing overnight. That's midnight into early Thursday morning. Here we go at 4 o'clock in the morning. Look at all the heavy snow continuing back here for us in the Colorado, part of Utah, part of Wyoming. And then there we go with the heavy rain. I think by this point, a lot that round one of the severe weather threat should be winding down. Look at this, though. Here comes round two. This is early in the day. This is 2 o'clock on Thursday. I still have it pretty wide. I'm going to zoom in for my friends around Joplin and southern Missouri as well. But here we go. There's the heavy snow still falling. It's because, again, we talked about this in yesterday's video. Now we have that big area of high pressure. The wind is going to be blasting out of the north and east, that upslope effect through the front range and into the eastern side of the Rockies. Meanwhile, we have the actual low pushing that direction, and that is helping all of this to erupt. All right, so let me get a little bit closer. It's a little too close. But look at these guys here. These are super south thunderstorms around Joplin to the west of Mountain View. We're looking in extreme northwest Arkansas around the Fayetteville area here. We're going to take that forward in time. Look at these double congealing lines here. So this is 6 o'clock. This is all local time now. So 6 o'clock local time. If you're watching from Kansas, Arkansas into Missouri, you see it all right there again. Another round coming through about Columbia. Uh, Mountain View heads up around dinner time uh, on Thursday, March 14th. 
Here is the risk area, also an elevated risk, an enhanced risk here officially from the Storm Prediction Center. We're looking at this little kidney bean shaped guy from about Durant right along the Red River here into extreme North Texas to the west of Little Rock, to the west of Memphis, including Joplin and uh, just to the south of Columbia. That is the enhanced threat, the highest probability for some really nasty thunderstorms with large hail continuing to be the main threat again tomorrow. But that severe weather threat as a whole extends from Chicago through Quincy into Kansas to Waco to Shreveport, includes Memphis and Paducah and then Indianapolis. We're in that one out of five on the severe weather scale, but that threat is not zero. The higher threat, though, would include uh, Quincy and again, St. Louis, Missouri, right on into central Illinois as well. So that's where the main severe weather threat is tomorrow. I wanted to touch on that because we saw the end of that severe weather risk. Now back to the snow. Again, this is a very expansive system here. Look at all the snow that is coming our way. Again, we're going to potentially get above a foot, 12 to 18 inches uh, for us in Denver. Look at this Georgetown. Again, the higher peaks certainly could be pushing three feet of snow. Estes Park, Rocky Mountain National Park area, 26 inches. Again, we could be well above two feet in the higher elevations in the park. And then again, pushing two feet in the higher peaks in southern Colorado as well. A little bit lower amounts, of course. We're on the western side. I mentioned before again that breeze out of the north and east. It's inducing that upslope effect. That's the air running into the mountains, nowhere to go but up as the mountains kind of force it up. We call that orographic lift, and that helps to enhance the snowfall. And again, it's because of that high pressure to our north, even though the storm itself is long gone and creating that severe weather to the east. So an interesting setup here. It happens from time to time. Good stuff for the skiers, though. Nice fresh powder over the next few days. Not as much snow, but the higher elevations of Utah also going to be measuring in feet. Same for us in Wyoming. Again, an expansive system. All right, so I want to take you over the next 72 hours here for everybody. And this is a kind of wide view. I'll get my head back out of the way, as I always do, so my friends on the West Coast can see. Here again is that system, and there's the two parts. High pressure there, low pressure there. There's that severe weather threat going to the east, some heavier rain developing along the North Gulf Coast as well. Uh, wintry mix getting into Maine. We're now at 6 o'clock in the morning on Friday, March 15th. Some rain extending back from uh, West Virginia, Western Pennsylvania, uh, into Jackson, Mississippi, the North Gulf Coast. We have just a mess going on in the desert southwest as well. Another system diving down out of Canada, Winnipeg. We're going to see some light snow out of this. And then this kind of pinwheels in that direction. Likely going to be too warm for Toronto, Ottawa, uh, into Montreal for a lot of snow anyway. Detroit, Chicago, we're going to be up on Saturday afternoon. Uh, for some scattered snow showers. This is going to be the system that brings in the colder air. We have out ahead of it, though, all the warmth. Look at that, pushing 90 in South Texas, south of San Antonio, 80 in Houston. All the cold air is back to the west. There we go on Friday. There's 4 o'clock in your afternoon. Very, very warm into Florida, low to mid 80s. Some of us going to be pushing 90 degrees in the Florida Peninsula as we get into Friday into the weekend before we bring in that colder air. We'll start to see some signs of that as we get into the weekend. And there you go. Look at all this purple and white right up there by the banner. That's the colder air that's going to dislodge and come in this direction. For that, I know I'm going a million miles a minute here. But there's a lot to break down over the time that we're 10-ish minutes that we're hanging out together. Look at this. This is Saturday. There is the colder air relative to normal. That's that next system that's going to bring all that junk that I just showed you on the future radar. Look at all the warmth still in the east. Not so fast. Look at that. Here comes the blue back, and then it blasts through. Now, this is the temperature departure relative to normal. So you see all this crazy purple and blue on the map, with the exception of here for us in Montana, in, uh, uh, Idaho, and the Dakotas, Pacific Northwest. We're going to be warming things back up below towards coming in our direction. So this cold not lasting long. This is relative to normal. So we're talking 20-ish degrees below normal. So again, we are in March 13th, March 14th. Middle of March, so the relative to cold uh, to normal is not as cold as this would have been if you see this map in January. So I want to be clear about that. But there is the cold. We February February that we forecast that on February 26th on the video that we did there, highlighting that we'd likely see that major pattern change for the eastern two thirds of the country, and that this was going to make winter lovers upset, angry because this is the pattern that we wanted in winter. 
And this is going to make the spring lovers upset because, hey, we're supposed to be transitioning out of this, transitioning out of this. And now we're getting this kind of crummy stuff. Of course, it's too little too late to save winter. It might get some snow out of the deal. But man, wish we would have had that back in January and February if you are a snow lover along the I-95 corridor especially. Alrighty, guys, if you're watching from the severe weather areas tonight and tomorrow, be safe. Have a way to get your warnings. Our local news station's weather app is the best way to go. Uh, download that. They are typically free. And then we're going to be watching that chilly air settling in early next week. It's not going to last too long, but again, it's going to make the spring lovers scream and be really upset because we were just in shorts and now we're going back to the jacket we'll catch you soon guys hit that subscribe button if you want to stay updated on all things weather we got you covered see you next time